the bigger fraction? Three quarters or five eighths? Oh dear. Both the top numbers are different. Oh, but even worse, so are the bottom numbers. I need help. Stand aside, maths man. Help is at hand. It's the fraction wall. Mmm, that's interesting. Look at the middle of the wall. One half is the same as two quarters, which is the same as four eighths. Hey, just a second. Fantastic fractions, look at those numbers. A half is the same as two quarters, which is the same as four eighths. All those fractions are exactly the same. Or we could say they are equivalent. Can you see a pattern in those numbers? There's one there somewhere. Anyway, back to my question. Would I rather have three quarters of spicy pepperoni pizza or five eighths? Well, five eighths is that much. And three quarters is that much. And three quarters of pizza is more than five eighths. Oh, so it has to be three quarters every time. That's right. And you can have some later. Let's move on. What is three-eighths of 16? Well, uh, one-eighth is smaller than 16, and two-eighths is a little bit bigger than that, isn't it? So um, three-eighths would be... Would you take away the... Stop! Stop! Perhaps it would help if I turn the number 16 into something a little easier. Now, the best way of finding three-eighths of something is to find one-eighth first. Trust me, our wholeness is rarely wrong. Here's the top of the fraction wall. Now, split the 16 tomatoes into the little boxes. There. So, 1 8 of 16 is 2, 2 8 of 16 must be 4, and 3 8 of 16 must be 6. So, 3 8 of 16 equals 6. Well done! There is another way of doing this. We could have split the 16 into eight equal groups, like this. Wait a minute. 16 split into eight groups is the same as saying 16 divided by eight. So to find an eighth of a number, you divide by eight. Exactly. Come on, find the answers to these questions. Come on, see if you can work them out as well. Find one-eighth of 24. One-eighth of 24. That's 24 divided by 8, and 24 divided by 8 equals 3. So one-eighth of 24 is 3. Uh, one-eighth of 40. One-eighth of 40. That's 40 divided by 8. And 40 divided by 8 equals 5, so 1 8 of 40 is 5. Well done, maths man. Both correct. Oh, no, not again. Yes? What? The diddler? Where? A house? Children? Oh, no. What is it? That dastardly diddliest diddler is up to some more of his diddling deeds down on planet Earth. Those children need a superhero. They need... Maths, man. I'm on me way. How to make a birthday cake? Shh. It's supposed to be a surprise for Mum. What are you two up to? Quick, it's Mum. We must make sure she doesn't come into the kitchen. Close. Back to the cake. You read out the recipe while I check the ingredients. Okay. 150 grams of flour. Yep. Two eighths of the margarine. Yep. Four eighths of the eggs. Yep. Three and six eight tablespoons of jam. 
Hang on a minute, some of these measurements sound a bit odd. I don't know how to measure some of these fractions. What are we going to do? What we need is another recipe. No, what we need is... Mass Man! It's a bird! Is it a pie? No, it's Mass Man. Ready to build and split all numbers into parts of numbers other superheroes cannot reach. Greetings, Earth children. What seems to be the problem? We're trying to make a cake, but we can't work out these measurements. They're in fractions. Oh, right. I think I know what'll come in handy. Move to one side while I mind zap a fraction wall. Now, what were those measurements? Two eighths of the margarine. Two eighths of the margarine. Mm. Ah, look. Two eighths is the same as a quarter, which means you want a quarter of the margarine. To find a quarter of the margarine, we need to cut the margarine in half and then cut one of those halves in half again, like this. So now you have one quarter. Got that? Yep. Good. Now what do you need? We need four eighths of the eggs. Four eighths of the eggs. Back to the fraction wall. Look, four eighths is the same as two quarters, which is the same as a half. Which means you need a half of the eggs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eggs. And we want half of them, which is four. Good. Any more fractions? Yes, we need three, six, eight tablespoons of jam. Hmm. You'll definitely need three whole tablespoons, but six eighths. Back to the fraction wall. Now then, six eighths. Look, that's the same as three quarters, which means you need three quarters of a whole spoonful of jam. So, get a whole spoonful. That's it. Now take off one quarter. You need to go into the middle for a half, and then find half of that half. And that leaves three quarters. That looks about three quarters, don't you think, Mass Man? I think that looks just right. So now you can finish making your cake. Thanks, Mass Man. You're the best. No problem. And remember, when you don't understand and you need a hand, who you gonna call? Mass Man! Up, up and away! How did I do, Your Holiness? You did well, maths man. So do I get a medal? You do. Well done, maths man. That's it for today. Thanks, Your Holiness. Uh, excuse me? Yes, you out there? Before you complete your quarters and eighths course, here's a challenge. Remember when Maths Man found one quarter of the margarine? He cut the whole piece in half and then in half again. So, can you think of a quick way of finding one quarter of the number 60? Until next time, let the fraction force be with you. Bye. In space lies superhero school.
Its next student is boldly going to learn what no other superhero has learned before. Yes, this is the story of Maths Man. For the life of man, it's Maths Man. Well, here I am, back in my learning pod. Hello. Today's a special day for me. You're late, Maths Man. The first rule of being a superhero is punctuality. If you're going to save the universe, you need to be on time. Apologies, Your Holiness. It's just that it's my birthday today. Oh, congratulations. Can I ask how old you are? Of course, but you'll have to work it out. See if you can work it out too. I'm a quarter of 80, and then you add three. You'll have to come up with something a little bit more difficult than that to catch me out, maths man. One quarter of 80. That's 80 divided by 4 equals 20 plus 3 makes 23. So, happy 23rd birthday. Now, can we get on with the lesson? You're studying fractions, and today's lesson is fifths and tenths. Let the training commence. Zap me a shape. A trapezium. Interesting. Now, I want you to work out what fraction of the shape is coloured in. Right. First my dividing line, and now for the bottom number. That's the denominator. I say the rhyme. Join in with me. How many equal parts can you find? Write this under the dividing line. Well, there are one, two, three, four, five equal parts. So the 5 goes under the dividing line. And now for the top number. That's the numerator. How many parts do we want this time? Write this number above the line. That's the coloured parts, and there are two of them. So that's 2 out of the 5, which is 2 fifths. Bravo, maths man. Now to move on to the next fraction. OK, I think I can take over now. I start with my dividing line, and now for the bottom number. Join in with me, fraction friends. How many equal parts can you find? Write this under the dividing line. Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now for the top number. How many parts do we want this time? Write this number above the line. Well, that's the green parts, and there are 1, 2, 3. So, that's three out of the ten, which is three tenths. Excellent, maths man. That shape was split into ten equal parts, called tenths. I think it's time for some dancing. I hope you mean dancing shapes. Call out the fractions you see when the dancing stops. <laughs> One tenth and nine tenths. Five tenths and five tenths. Three tenths and seven tenths. Hope you enjoyed that, maths man, because it's that time again. What time again? Fraction number line tightrope time again. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Now, off you go and watch those tenths drop. One tenth. Boy, that dropped quickly. Does that mean that tenths are big or small fractions? I think I can guess what's coming next. See if you can call out the fractions. Two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. Five tenths. This feels like halfway. So I wonder if there's another way of writing this fraction. One half. Yeah, I was right. A half. Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. Nine tenths. One. And one is the same as ten tenths. 
<sighs> oh, well done, maths man. <gasps> oh, quick! Don't tell me you're going to zap me back to the beginning to see the fifth drop. I'd like to, but we haven't got time. My favourite quiz show is about to start. It's Find the Fraction. F -f Find the Fraction! Hi, Colin Cool's the name. Fractions are the game. On today's Find the Fraction. Okay, we have the blue. We have the red. And we have the questions. So let's play. Find the fraction. <laughs> now, the team that gets the most questions correct will go on to the Find the Fraction physical challenge. Look to your monitors, question number one. Which of these fractions is the smallest? Is it A, four tenths? Is it B, two fifths? Or is it C, three tenths? Make your choice and find the fraction. And time's up, and both teams have answered C. The correct answer is C. Give yourselves two points. Okay. Now, look to your monitors, question number two. This train has five, five carriages. What fraction of the train is still in the tunnel? Is it A, four-fifths? Is it B, three-fifths? Or C, two-fifths? Make your choice, find the fraction. And time's up. <laughs> and incredibly, both teams have answered C. The correct answer is C. Give yourselves two more points. Okay, look to your monitors, question number three. This tangerine has got ten segments. It has been split into two parts. What fraction of the whole tangerine is on the plate? Is it A, four-tenths? Is it B, three-fifths? Or C, six-tenths? Make your choice, find the fraction. And time's up. Now the blue team have answered B, but the red team have answered A. The correct answer is A. <laughs> Give yourselves two more points. <laughs> now, this noise means we've run out of time. Let's count up the final scores. The blue team have got a wonderful four, but the red team are this week's winners with six points. Come and join me for the Find the Fraction Physical Challenge. <laughs> Physical challenge. Now, Donovan, your job is to find the fifth blocks and the tenth blocks hidden within the balloons. And your job, Leanne, is to build a fraction wall with them. Can they do it? Let's find out as we find the fraction. Today, the red team are looking for five fifth blocks and ten tenth blocks. Time's up! <laughs> Come and join me! Didn't they build well? <laughs> Let's have a look at your fraction wall. You have five-fifths, and that makes one whole. And you also have ten-tenths. That makes one whole, too. Congratulations! You've built the perfect fifth and tenth fraction wall. <laughs> Sadly, we've run out of time. But never mind, we'll see you next week on Find the Fraction! <laughs> Phew, that was exciting. I know, I was on the edge of my seat, but the excitement doesn't stop there, maths man. Harry Hansen's got a sport that's gonna bowl us over. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Sports Stand with me, Sue Harker. And me, Harry Henson. Marvellous. What have you got for us this week, Harry? Well, today, Sue, instead of looking at some champions of the past, we've got some possible champions of the future. This is Spectrum Bowling Alley in Guildford, where members of 
fab are polishing up on their 10-pin bowling skills. And now the bit you've all been waiting for, the fractions! Oh, not again. Because, look closely, there are 10 bowling pins all together. So those 10 pins make up the whole. So each pin is one out of the 10 or, or one tenth of the whole. Well, thank you, Harry. Let's get back to the bowling. And here we have Matthew Ryder, one of Fab's very skillful players. Just look at that yes, technique. Yes, but if I could just stop you there, Sue. Matthew has knocked down three pins, but that leaves seven pins still standing. That's seven out of the ten, or seven tenths, seven tenths of the total. Look, Harry, do you think we could just talk about bowling techniques or, or the team? OK, Sue. <laughs> Next coming up is Carly Francis. Now look how skillfully she curves the ball down the alley. But what I find really interesting is that Carly has knocked down five pins. That leaves five pins left standing. That's five out of the ten, or five tenths of the total. Harry. Susie. Harry. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but Harry, five tenths is exactly the same as a half. Yes? No. Oh, well, in that case, back to the bowling. Next bowler coming up is Kane Holborn, one of Fab's top scorers. Yes, sir. Kane has just scored an amazing eight, and he's... Leaving, leaving two pins left standing. That's two out of the ten, or, or two tens. I've had enough of ten. What do you expect from 10-pin bowling? If it was 6-pin bowling, then we'd be talking 6s. If it was 12-pin bowling, we'd be talking 12s. Mind you, if it was 2-pin bowling, we'd be talking a halves then. Well, uh, fortunately, that's all we've got time for this week. So until next time, goodbye. pin bowling, so we're talking tenths. <laughs> Now, maths man, say I wanted to buy you a birthday present, but I just couldn't decide what to buy you, so I was going to give you some money instead. £20? Thank you. Alas, you can't have all the £20. You can have three-tenths of it, but first you have to work out what three-tenths of 20 actually is. Thanks. Well, it's, um, help, your wholeness. As it's your birthday, I will help you. First, let's turn the 20 into something that will make it a little easier. 20 one-pound coins. Now, the best way of finding three-tenths of something is to find one-tenth first. Watch. Let's split or divide our coins into ten equal parts. There. Now you can see exactly what one-tenth of 20 is. Dancing denominators. One tenth of twenty is two, two tenths of twenty are four, and three tenths of twenty are six. So my birthday present is six pounds? Yes! Correct. Now don't spend it all at once. Wait a minute, Your Holness. To find one tenth, I could have split the twenty pounds into equal groups, like this. Very good, maths man. And just a sec, to find one-tenth of a number is the same as dividing that number by ten. You've got it. <laughs> so, how do you think you find one-fifth of a number? You divide the number by five? Spot on. Here, have a go at this. One-fifth of forty. One-fifth of forty. That's forty <laughs> divided by five. And 40 divided by 5 equals 8. So 1 fifth of 40 is 8. Oh! <laughs> Pull marks. You learn fast, maths man. Now we need... Oh, dear. Excuse me a second. Yes, what? The diddler? Where on earth is he? On earth? Children? Garden? Pond? Wellies? Oh! 
That diddling, dastardly diddler is up to his diddliest diddles again. Those children need a superhero. Quick! I'm on me way. OK, the girls in Pond is going here, so we better mark out the area before Dad gets back. He's put the measurements on the plan. But we better get our wellies on first. Race you! Right, how long should the hole be? Two metres, 80 centimetres long and two and four tenths metre wide? Two and four tenths of a metre wide? I understand the two metres, but four tenths of a metre? How do we work that out? Well, uh, um... What we need is a different ruler. No, what we need is Math Man! Is it a bird? Is it a slide? No, it's Math Man. Ready to build and split whole numbers into parts of numbers other superheroes cannot reach. Greetings, Earth children. What seems to be the problem? We need to measure out the area for our pond, but one of the measurements is in fractions. Look, two and four tenths metres. Oh, right. Well, the two metres is easy. It's the four tenths we need to work out. I think we need to take a closer look at our metre ruler. We need to find four tenths of this metre, so let's start by splitting our ruler into ten equal parts, each part being one tenth of a metre. Now, we know there are a hundred centimetres in a metre, so one tenth of a metre is the same as ten centimetres, so two tenths of a metre is the same as 20 centimetres, so three tenths is... 30 centimetres! So four tenths of a metre is the same as... 40 centimetres! So two and four tenths of a metre is the same as... Two metres forty centimetres! Hooray! Thanks, Mass Man! Now we can finish measuring out the area for the pond. No problem! And remember, when you don't understand and you need a hand, who are you going to call? Math Man! Up, up, in the How did I do, Your Holiness? Congratulations, Math Man. You have now passed the fifth and tenth part of your fraction training. You learn fast, Math Man. Now go and prepare for our next meeting. Uh, excuse me? Yes, you out there? Where are you going? Before we meet again, I have a question. If I were to ask you which is the bigger fraction, one-fifth or one-tenth, you'd know the answer. So does that mean the bigger the bottom number, the bigger the fraction? Until next time, let the fraction force be with you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, and half a man.